Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is June 21st, 2010, and this is Day 9 Daily number 141. I know you're noticing something, and I'm very excited about it, too. I have lights. I have a huge... I have a huge light right here that I cannot look directly at because it's a huge light. And on that side, I also have a huge light. I even have a backlight because I want to make sure that I'm well lit because there's this problem that was happening, which is, um, I, I don't, I think it was the firmware updated on my camera and the, it was constantly like recolor balancing and everything. Uh, cause I didn't, you know, have that many lights in my room. So at the start of the cast, when it was like bright and 7 PM in Southern California, it would be a nice bright room, and by the end, you'd be this like gritty, dark, depressing cast. As I drool excitedly about my new my new lights, but alas, oh, oh, lights everywhere, thug snapping for it. In other exciting news, we are doing the second part of our good friend Artosis's gameplay, and of course, Artosis does not pronounce his name Artosis, but if you've ever seen Fargo, you kind of have to say it that way. So we are going to be watching an absolutely brilliant game by Artosis, but I first have to share a little personal tale with you. Um, I don't know if you guys ever do this, but I wanted to switch it up, so I slept on my bed upside down. I don't know if you ever do this, but you know, like, my head's at the wall and my feet are facing the room, so instead I put my head facing the room and my feet facing the wall, because this is the variety that I get to impose upon myself when I have zero dollars in my bank account. It's the sort of fun thing I do to change my day up. Except my pillow just fell off the back of my bed and I slept like this, like, all night, so my neck hurts so bad. I cannot emphasize to you how horrible it is to have this neck right now. Like, seriously. Like, my friend, um, my friend asked me what I thought of Iron Man 2, and I thought it was, like, okay. So I, I wanted to, like, shrug my shoulder, like, it was alright, but instead I just hurt really bad and screamed at him. So this is basically how the conversation went. He's like, hey, Sean, how was Iron Man 2? And I went, ow! And then just left, right? I, I didn't try to explain, like, oh, I just meant to shrug. I just screamed out at him and went to my room because that makes for a good story on his half. I'm sure he's, like, telling his girlfriend, like, God, Sean's being all weird today. Guess he didn't really like Iron Man 2 or something, so I'm more than satisfied with that. And another exciting news, a third housemate named Sean will be moving in shortly. So there are three Seans living in my house now, so a lot of good, funny, fun laughter and happy times we shall have together. But without any further ado, let us delve directly into the depths that is Artosis's brilliant Zerg vs. Terran play. Okay, so um, I would say for the last week and a half, I've been doing pretty heavy analysis, right? I've been doing a lot of let's watch two videos in a row so we can create vectors of learning. <laughs> like, oh, we want to have a benchmark and analyze the differences. We got guests to come on, and that's all great and stuff. But today we're just going to watch one sweet game and just appreciate how amazing Artosis is. Like, he's some sort of fine liqueur, like a fine wine. We just want to just not swallow it. We just want to hold it in our mouth and just go, oh my god, doesn't that just taste great? Uh, and then after, in about 45 minutes, we'll just happily swallow his strategy, bro. But, um, yeah, let's just let that metaphor dry a little bit. So anyways, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so the reason that this game excited me is because, first of all, it's an awesome Zerg vs. Terran that you can get, just download Artosis's Asia Replay Pack number two. So it's an awesome game, but also it showcases a little something different in terms of Zerg vs. Terran play. So... An increasingly popular trend in Zerg vs. Terran is to do some sort of mutalisk into Baneling play and to go mainly Zergling, Baneling, and Fester and then finish it up with Ultralisks. And this works really, really well. Let's ignore the mutas for a little bit. Just Ling, Baneling, and Infestors into Ultralisks. Why does this work so well? We get our upgrades for our Lings and Banelings, which also upgrade our Ultralisks. Easy, right? Really, really easy. And infestors are there because we need infestors to get a hive, so pff, I'll just, you know, spew some fungal growth on those marines. Yeah, and I'm awesome. And the mutalisks are a little thing you can add in at the start, because if you make mutas, he makes marines, and your banelings hurt his marines. Pretty good. So that's been the increasing rise sort of style. And the old school style was mass hydra roach because roaches are one food, hydras do a lot of damage. I'm awesome. That literally was the entire thought process I used in my Zerg vs. Terran. It's like, well, I'm going to make hydras and roaches because I'm awesome. And of course, got a mighty fine win rate that I'm very proud of. God, my neck hurts. Oh, God, I screwed it up good. But anyways, so those are the two things that I'm seeing almost exclusively in games is... 
Ling Baneling into Ultras, you know, sometimes some Mutalus at the start, or Hydra Roach into Broodlord. But our good friend Artosis does something totally different and wacky and amazing, and it just got me, whew, give me the geek chills, one of Artosis's favorite good old terms. So let us, let us, let us jump directly into this game of our good buddy Artosis as he dukes it out up on the Asia server. Um, this is Garden of War. Artosis is spawning as our red Zerg friend in the top right. And in the bottom left, we do have Side, who's spawning as the blue Terran in the bottom left. Now, I don't know if this is StarCraft Side, the incredibly famous Zerg player from the um, what used to be the core pro team, but is now the um, OGN Sparky's pro team, or excuse me, the Height Sparky's pro team. Um, or it could just be a guy who named himself Side, you know... <laughs> It's one of those two possibilities. He's either someone really famous, or he's just a guy with a keyboard. Um, but of course, Artosis is Artosis. I'm sure that there are very few people who thought of a name as kick-ass as Artosis when they were 12. And this is our real superhero spawning up here at the top right. So of course, we do our usual considerations for Steps of War. It's a close map, so we're gonna have to deal with early aggression, right? We're gonna have to deal with, oh, our natural's here, but look, it is a straight shot to our opponent's main. Super ultra giga close positions. So our natural, obviously gonna be a little tough to hold, but our third base is gonna be a little easier to hold. Because once we kill these destructible rocks, we have a high ground advantage here to defend one of our entrances. And we have a high ground advantage here to defend our other entrance. And it's easy to bounce back and forth between these two locations. So not I, I would say that Zerg has at the very least some somewhat good expanding patterns um, going on. Some somewhat good expanding patterns for the mid game. But um, early game is generally where most of the panic happens. So either way, this is why we see, oh, Artosis doing the ever-popular Zerg opening. Now this is, I wouldn't really call this an opening as much as I would call it a technique. If you make your gas before your spawning pool, your spawning pool will finish right as you have 100 gas. Easy, easy way to get Zergling speed out quickly without, you know, getting two geysers and doing something stupid. We see that um, our Tolosis is doing a little bit of harassment with his drones. That's all good. Uh, obviously an excellent choice to be able to harass. Two-player map, you know your opponent's going to be able to... Um, um, you know you're going to be able to do a little bit of nibbling with your drone at your opponent. Now Artosis could steal the gas. Um, I wouldn't say definitely steal the gas. If you want to, make sure it is an integral part of your strategy. Don't just do it because you see the Vespine Geyser and you just go, <gasps> I can take it, and then just build it and think that you have some sort of moral victory. You always got to have a plan for an action as big as stealing one of his geysers. But either way, our good friend Artosis, so notice how he's saving up money. Oh, he can plant a queen. Can he ever plant a queen? You sh There's the queen. Um, he can throw down some Zerglings. Yep, here's one Ling coming out. And of course, Zergling speed gets started right as he has 100 gas. It, some players will be taking guys off gas. Some players will be leaving it on to go directly to Mutalisks. It looks like Artosis is just getting Ling speed early on, so that way he can take his expansion. We love this play as Zerg. We love getting any kind of early Zergling play because, excuse me, any early Zergling speed because we can deal with Hellions really easily. Ordinarily, Hellions are ultra scary, um, but less so with Zergling speed. Look at Artosis. This drone has been alive for so long. He's gotten a lot of good information. He hasn't seen the second gas get taken. A little disappointing that he didn't see the factory, but you know, when this depot is here, you know that this barracks really isn't going to be making a, a tech lab or a reactor anytime soon. Just very, very, very good play by Artosis. And just in case, he's sending his first six Zerglings. Now look how awesome it is that he has speed. I'm actually going to leave my hand um, over the spawning pool for the time being, just so we can see the speed. But he gets to poke up here, and always do this with your Zerglings if you can. Always just bounce up and check out what's going on here. A few Marines, uh, no add-on. This is a ton of information. As we can see, Side is just now finishing his factory, can just now be getting some Hellions, which is, of course, very, 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 very good. So, anyways, Command Center coming out by Side. This is pretty ordinary, um, getting an, uh, an expansion at this time. Artosis got his Expo as soon as he could, once he um, took his 
Once he took his Zergling speed and got a few links out, he's getting a second queen to get some Mondo economy. Um, now, because the folks at Ustream are awesome, they move my logo from the top right to the top left, so you can even see the food counts now. So I'm just going to hang on this production tab for a little bit. And let's just note what Artosis is seeing. Now, this is something that um, I mentioned in one of the previous casts that I call the Overlord Clamp. One Overlord on the top here, one Overlord on the right. This Overlord is getting to see that a command center is going down. It is getting to see all these marines being made up here. So this overlord is getting a lot of information. Pretend for a moment that Artosis couldn't see this command center. Pretend that this overlord was sitting and only blank space was here. He can happily move an overlord in from the in from the right and move this overlord in from the top and he'll be able to see everything up here and everything over here. In other words, he will get to see what Terran is doing. And Artosis uses this technique quite a bit, just throwing it out there because it is something that is very, very helpful. But anyways, continuing to resume the game. Out pops the queen. Ah, there she is. And uh, Artosis's other queen looks like she is marching around really pissed that this SCV is still...